Claudia, welcome, welcome, welcome to our home therapy podcast. I have watched you up close from afar. Everything you do, the energy you bring is what I admire the most and why I was so excited when you said you would be willing to come on and share your story with us. Um, So, you know, just to begin and diving in, this energy, I know you were very close with your grandmother and your mother. Um, You have a wonderful, would we say bicultural or do you even have, is it tricultural or bicultural, just a diverse cultural background? Um, I can relate. My grandmother lived with us and I'm sure as your grandmother was teaching you to cook, My grandmother was teaching us dumplings and things like that. But this energy you have, of course, (laughs) God-given. Thank you. uh, Did some of that energy of just zest for life come from your family? Like, where did this begin? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely, right? I I think... Um, I, I definitely like fit into that like spicy Latina thing. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, because, um, you know, I, I grew up with uh, a group of really strong women. My grandmother, who I actually mention as my grandmother in most things, is actually my great aunt. Um, my grandmother died when my mom was seven. So my mom had kind of a, a rough upbringing, right? Um, kind of bouncing around from from her brother's house to my uncle's house. Um, because he was the eldest sibling and then moving over to my grandma's house eventually when my grandma was like this girl's really thin we've got to get her way back up you know typical Latino conversation um but yeah my grandma and um what I call who I call my grandma my, my abuelita Armelinda you know her and my grandma grandma left Mazatlan Sinaloa because they had gone in a really big fight <laughs> that is interesting and this is the first time I actually publicly tell this story, but they left Mazatlan because they had gone into this huge fight with a lady that was kind of messing around with like uh, my grandma's boyfriend. And so they were like, they like, apparently like they beat her up and all this stuff. And they were like, we've got to flee. And so they left and they came to the border towns um, where I, funny, funny enough, like full circle where I now live in Tijuana, Baja California, which is the, the city just South of San Diego. And they came here and they um, decided to make a life for themselves. And and fast forward to when I came into the picture, um, my grandma was the one that helped my mom as a single mom kind of, you know, um, get through life. And and, uh, my grandma, she did whatever she could from cooking to selling, um, reselling stuff at like swap meets, Um, you know, like she did that for years. And I just think that she kind of raised all of us with this kind of perspective of like, you, you're going to do whatever you have to do to get a, like, you know, far in life and to get your kids ahead and to put them through education. And she put everyone through school and made sure everyone got through school. And, you know, and, and along the lines, obviously um, also taught me how to, to cook and um, taught my mom lots of the recipes that, you know, that my grandma would have obviously shared if, if she had lived a little bit longer, but you know, such is life. And, um, and I think, you know, sometimes all that, that rough and tumble of life and those tribulations and how you overcome them really teach you to be so grateful and positive when things are good. It's like, Hey, let's celebrate. Let's, you know, laugh like no one's listening. And, you know, and when we all get together, it definitely sounds like a bunch of cackling witches we say, <laughs> cause that laugh, imagine that across like all the whole family, right? Like aunts, cousins, everyone, like we all laugh with like this kind of like, it's you infectious. know, laugh from the inside. Yeah. From the, from the inside of your soul, right. You just release this happiness. And so, um, you know, and if I can bring that to everything that I touch and everything that I do, I think, um, we're doing a, a good service. So we have so many things that are wrong in this world. And if we could just have a little moment of lightness and fun and, and, um, and brightness in our world, then, then why not? Right. Well, you certainly do that very, very Thank well. You. I, I just, you. my dopamine serotonin levels go way up when I see your Instagram, when I see what your latest endeavor is like your food delivery system for people who want a meal plan. Like, I'm like, that is fantastic. Like, yeah. like Claudia, you bring your light everywhere. You. Um, you know, I think about the kitchen, I think about food and how 
there's so many core memories. Like I know you made so many core memories within your own family and home, yep. but when you are creating food and recipe for your audience or for people just who love to eat, um, is there some kind of intention? Is there a thought process or creative process that you go through or is it just um, on a whim every time? No, I think, you know, I think like, first of all, I think that it evolves. Right. Um, I think like much like you, right. I'm sure like what you were doing in terms of like styling and all of that, like would be so different from where you are now. Right. I mean, um, and so I feel like that has evolved too. Like, I think when I came out of master chef, um, in comparison to when I cooked for my friends before going on MasterChef, right? Um, different, different perspectives, different ideas, different things. And I think like one of the things that I really tried to do on MasterChef, for example, was to create menus that were very elevated and very highbrow and very poised and very, all of those things. And, um, and in order for somebody like a Gordon Ramsay to take Latino food, in my opinion, seriously, because that's really what, what is happening right in the world um cultural food right and, and it doesn't have to just be latino it, it could be asian it could be all of the other you know southeast asian um african like all of these different cuisines that are from you know what we call third world countries these foods are not valued they're seen as something that should be affordable and cheap and like as though the ingredients somehow or the cooking technique doesn't require as much skill level as um, something that would be made out of a French brigade system, because that's what we've seen as the chef. Right. Um, and so I think like my perspective then was how can I make Mexican food prettier, more beautiful, more presentable, more French. Um, and I think that I've started to move away from that again um, and really kind of leaning back into my roots, because I think through the pandemic, if anything became more clear, it's that nostalgia is on the table. We have realized how important those roots are, our connectedness to our family, to our people, to, to the people that we love. And like, if I am moving away from my food in order to fit this kind of Franco-Mexican style, then that's really not authentic to myself. And the more that I thought about it, the, the less authentic it felt for me. And so do I still have like the plating techniques and stuff? Yeah, of course, right? And do I still try to make some things a little bit sexier by, you know, um, using some of the French techniques in order to make like, you know, strain the sauces and all of that? Yes, absolutely. You know, um, clarifying consommes to make them more luxurious and sexy. Yes, I do those things. However, at their core, it has to taste and it has to be Mexican the way that my grandma did because what ends up happening is I will have people that will literally come to tears at the table. And it's that connectedness to, oh my gosh, like I grew up with food like this. This felt like a warm hug. I don't even know your abuelita, but this tastes like my abuelita's food. Or I'm not even Mexican, but I felt Mexican. You know? <laughs> and that type of connectedness, I think, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, that type of connectedness, I think we we can all relate to right there. Even if it wasn't your mom who was cooking, there's somebody in your family who made, even if it was, I don't know, shepherd's pie, right? Whatever it is, there is something in your family that 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 is just so reminiscent of, of the people that came before you or that love you or that want to spend time with you and that wanted to cook with you. Well, listeners couldn't see my head, but I was like a bobblehead, like nodding <laughs> up and down frantically because you you make my heart sing. You know, as a therapist and interior designer, my main passion is to combine those two and and use our home as a therapeutic environment. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted you to come and share your story and your thoughts is, you know, that vulnerability, that authenticity, getting back to the roots. It all started, I mean, we had a blaring right? Wake up call during the pandemic. Yeah. And I know that also prompted um, you to now be, you know, you have your foot in your home country and um, in the States, but it's, it just prompted us to really explore our roots and where we want to stay present, yes. where we want to renew ourselves and therefore then be more creative, right? Cause yeah. we can't really be creative without taking pause 
and rest. And so I'm really curious, besides cooking in your home, are you a tub time girly? Like, do you love, like, what's your way of relaxing, renewing besides inspiring recipes and cooking? Oh man. Um, (laughs) well, I'm not a tub time girly. I don't have a tub. (laughs) Um, Mexico does not have a thing for tubs. I, um, so no big deal. I'm not, I've never been a big bathtub girl, uh, per se. I think like for me, um, I'm really a big fan of, and I think you talk about this in your book. Um, and I kind of reached out to you about kind of creating these spaces, right. That are like, just bring you Zen. And I know it sounds silly because I, I know so many people are like, get away from caffeine. But like, for me, my coffee is kind of this ritual that I have to do every morning. It's the smell of the coffee. It's the preparation. It's like, it's all of it. Right. It's, and it's not just like I'm brewing coffee, right? Like I'm brewing coffee and I'm making special and I'm using my monk sugar and I'm using this, you know, like, and so like I'm creating my own and, and it's, and it's interesting because I, I ended up in this space because of a tragedy and, and now it's become such a ritual for me that like, like every time I make my coffee, I'm just like more, I feel like more equipped to take on the day and like everything is going to be okay. Um, and so like, I have two stories in this house and I was just telling my daughter, I was like, I think I'm going to order a second like coffee machine. Uh, cause they don't pay me. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to order a second one for downstairs because sometimes like I don't necessarily want to come upstairs, but I still want to be like in my zone area, you know? And, and like, um, so I'm like, maybe I'll create like my own little nook, like little area for my coffee downstairs. Um, so that regardless of, because this house feels like it is too, like I, I get two living rooms. So like, it feels like two houses, you know? Um, and, but my bedroom's downstairs. So like, if I want to just have like a lazy day, I think like, that's also a big one. Um, I've really, I'm, I'm really happy that I, that I came here. Um, I ended up moving to Tijuana when my daughter decided to go to university, but this house is so like, I finally got to have like my adult house, if that makes sense. Like after kids, right. Like, um, now, like as an empty nester, And so like, I bought beautiful furniture and like, I bought like the nice one that like, isn't going to get ruined by like kids. Like I bought like the, you know, like the beautiful, um, what are they called? Like a marble tabletops and stuff for like my side tables, because I know nobody's going to be spilling like soda or something on. (laughs) So like, it's, it's like those little touches and things that like, when I come home, I'm just like, yes you know, and, and, and I needed that. I really needed that because I think right now I'm kind of in like a very big nesting phase where I want to be home and I want to, I don't want to be out. Like I, as much as like my friends are like, you need to get out of the house. Your kid's no longer there. Like, but I'm like, yeah, but like, I love my house, you know, like for the first time I have like, like even right now, like I'm, I'm sitting at my dining room table, but like, I'm looking at my table and I love looking at my table. I like created this kind of tablescape that's like vines. And to me, it means opulence. I created it for new years and I wanted to create this. It has like lettuces and, 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 and grapes and berries and golds and things like that. And, and my, my daughter goes, mom, that looks a little, um, a little goth. And I was like, well, maybe your mom is a little goth. (laughs) because it's got like blacks and whites and, you know, and it's on the darker tones and my, and my table is darker, but you know, I think like it's me though. Right. And, and I think like so often when you find a space, like I love looking at the background of, of your house, right? Like your background, beautiful, but like that would never be my house. Right. Like, and everybody has what speaks to them. Right. And what, you know, and, and, and deep behind this like red hair, everybody thinks like, oh, she's like dyed her hair because she's, you know, spicy Latina. And it's like, yeah, I am those things, but I actually dyed my hair because I was super into punk and goth music, but you know, way, way, way back in the day. And so like, now that I'm coming back to my own, I feel like after being a mom, this single mom for so many years, working hard to get her daughter to university. Now I'm like creating a space that's my own and like rediscovering myself through my space and God, that is so powerful. Like I got chills just saying that, but it, uh, but it, it really is, you know? Absolutely. I, I think nostalgia, as you mentioned, but just that vulnerability and authenticity that you and I uh, love so much, it's, but it can be kind of scary, right? It, oh my it's God. A little so intimidating. Scary. And I can already see the listeners. Some of them may say, 
I don't, I don't really know, you know, for me, it's like, I don't really know my style or I don't know what I like, or for you, maybe your audience would be saying, I don't really know how to cook. Like, what are my first steps into finding my own cooking style or recipes or my own style of interior design? There's a sense of letting go of control and vulnerability. How do you advise someone who's new to cooking? Let's just, that's just the easy yeah. one. Uh, yeah to start exploring their culinary skills. Because I think there's a lot of people with limiting beliefs that think, oh, I'm I'm the worst cook ever. Like I could never yeah. cook like my friend who's uh, the hostess with the mostess. But I have a feeling we all can give ourselves more credit. Oh, totally. So how do we foster that in the kitchen? Yeah, you know, I think, I think it's really a matter of stopping that like kind of self-deprecating talk, right? Like oh, well, I can't boil water. I burn water. Like, it's like, okay, right. But like anybody can burn water. I've burned water. I'm a master chef. Like everybody can like forget about it because we're distracted, right? I think one, if you consider what you're actually doing, I think like so much of cooking is is actually not about cooking. It's about nurture. Um, for me, like when I think about food, I think about like nourishing my body, nourishing the people that I love, um, and then creating something that is going to be delicious and, and nostalgic and all those things. Right. But on, on a kind of pulled back version, right. I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to reference something so basic, but girl dinner on TikTok, girl dinner, right. I love everybody, it. right. Everybody knows what girl dinner is. Right. And, and for those people that don't know, because they're not on TikTok, like I wasn't, uh, girl dinner is essentially like things that women put together on a plate that don't make any sense because you just don't have the time. And so a lot of my friends who don't cook always end up with the girl dinner. And then when I look at those girl dinners, I'm like, I know you said you don't know how to cook, but let me explain why every single thing on that dish makes perfect sense. Because you know you need a protein, because you know you need like a, a veg, you know you need a sauce. Like there's all of these little things that all create actually a composed dish, even if it is things that don't make sense put together. And then you still add a dessert because you probably add a candy or a little bread or like a little, you, you get what I'm saying. Yes. Um, and, and so when I, when I say that to them, they turn around and go, well, dang, I didn't think about that. And I'm like, yeah, because we all know what the basics are. So if you want to get out of your own way in the kitchen, I think the bit, the biggest thing is to work on your strengths. I don't sit there and go, I am the best at making fresh macaroons. Cause yeah. I know I'm not, I have yeah. failed hundreds of times. And when I say hundreds, I mean, hundreds, like, I was trying to open up a bakery and I was like, macaroons are like a big thing in Tijuana and on the border. Like I want to do this. It is not my thing. It is okay to accept that is not your thing. But just because one thing isn't your thing doesn't mean that you can't get better at other things. Right? Like I'm a really big fan of like perfecting one dish and making that like your signature dish. Right. Regardless of what it is, even if it is mashed potatoes, right? Like I think that when you create something like that, then then you can add to it, right? You can take another small recipe and add that to your mashed potatoes and be like, mm -hmm, that's right, I made that. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, my girl dinner, my chef dinner was mashed potatoes sauteed with um, some broccolini and some mushrooms. And I dropped a little bit of demi-gloss on there. Like that was it, like fully vegetarian. You know what I mean? Just like super yummy. Um, yummy. but, but that's, but my point is like, sometimes I think we overthink it. So really getting out of your way means stop overthinking it, try practice. And you, the only thing you can do is find out what you're not good at, <laughs> let go of that and then move on to the next thing. And, and, and just know that everyone fails. I mean, my Cochi Dorado recipe, which is my little cookie, it was 187 times it took to get wow. one recipe to what it was. So know that we don't get chefs don't get there by being perfect the first time no like and and in fact I take this lesson from like my high school like a uh, drill teacher she would always say perfect uh practice doesn't make perfect perfect practice makes perfect and I would be like damn <laughs> <laughs> because the truth is practice makes perfect like you have to practice and practice yes. and practice and practice and be and be gentle with yourself it's not always going to be perfect and the amount of things that I have burned in my life it's well, not <laughs> I, re 
I love that because people think the same way about interior design and they compare their home to HGTV or the magazine worthy homes that we see on Pinterest. And, you know, honestly, everyone can build up that skill, can build up that muscle to style shelves, style your co coffee table. Those are all things that everybody can work towards and work towards their own style, you know, just like your own yeah. cooking style, your recipes or interior design. It's really just practice and yeah. without judgment. I think that's one thing that it, this spans all cultures. Um, and especially with female, with women, we tend to be really hard on ourselves. Yep. And so really letting go of that judgment and just experimenting. And you just spoke to the heart of, I think it doesn't matter what genre or what niche it's finding ourselves is just taking that first step of exploration. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I, I really love that. Now I know your roots in cooking is Mexican food, but what is your second favorite dish yourself <laughs> that you like to enjoy? Is it still Mexican food or is it something totally wildly different? I mean, I wouldn't say wildly different. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say wildly different. I, I definitely really lean toward Italian food. My mom loved Italian food growing up. And so I found myself like really trying to make mom happy by learning all of kind of like the Italian foods. And then on top of that, I had like a couple of Italian best friends. Um, San Diego has a pretty good Italian community, yes. like little Italy and all yes. of that. And so San um, Diego has really good food in general. I agree. It's like a, yes. I, I, I keep telling everybody, stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want everyone to find out. Cause then, you know, it's going to be harder to live here and, and all of that. But um, yeah, man, it's um, it. Yeah. I think Italian food is probably my go-to. I like love like making fresh pasta, making gnocchi, like gnocchi is like my, I have that at least once a week. Um, like I die for a good cacho e pepe. So it's not even like really superfluous food. It's just like the basics, right? I mean, cacho e pepe, you can't get as like simple as that, right? Um, but then on top of that, I think a lot of the flavors are very reminiscent, right? We use, my mom would always joke that like all Italian food and all Mexican would start with tomato and garlic. <laughs> tomato and garlic, tomato and garlic, tomato and garlic. So I feel like sure. there are definitely a lot of echoes of flavor through that food. So I think I can see why that would be a favorite as well. Um, I think right now I am really, 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 really into um, exploring kind of Asian food. Like I've, I've really been doing a deep dive into like, um, into like Korean food. My daughter has got into K-pop a lot, yeah. but I like love Korean food in general. Um, and so like, I've really been digging into that. And then I have uh, one, one of my really good friends whose birthday is tomorrow is Japanese. And so Carrie's been like, also like just teaching me a bunch of stuff and, bringing me ingredients and and I'm like she's like going to to Japan and I'm like bring me katsuboshi <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah like I you know I, I like I love getting like authentic ingredients and really playing with them and then and then also I love seeing the parallels through our food because people think like we have very different foods and and in reality once you start kind of digging through the recipes you start realizing oh no it's pretty much the same thing just in different ways right we build and create layers of flavor through um through kind of similar pathways and i i i really really love that i love that too and i'm chinese american so i want you to fit in some chinese food too yes <laughs> <laughs> i got I, I got to push that through yes um, yes yes for your kitchen and because my interior designer mind is, is swirling about what goes through a chef's mind yes. when you are like, say you moved into this house. Yes. Um, what were there? Are, do you have certain flows of the kitchen layout that's more conducive to you? Are, are you just like the rest of us who have certain, um, you know, just certain favorites, like a kitchen island must be, you know, is so for some people is a must or some people love open shelving. Some people don't. Do you as a chef or, you know, have some particularities about what a kitchen setup should be like design wise, function wise, organizational wise? What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, well, a couple of things. This house is, was built. So this house belongs to one of my best friends who is a chef. Ah. So very lucky. 
very lucky on that end um, because it already came with like a, a, you know, like a professional hood and like a professional, um, all of that. Right. But this house is very modern. And I mentioned, I'm very like nostalgia, very more like vintage traditional Mexican. Right. So I'm used to kind of having like the everything on the counter. Cause I'm a weirdo like that, but I have to admit, like, um, every time I cleaning, my cleaning lady hasn't come. So I'm not prepared to show you my kitchen today, but I will send you pictures that you can drop in now. But, um, but, uh, but essentially what I love is like having everything kind of just cleared. Um, I have open shelves, but instead of having, um, plates and things there, which is what he used to put there, I don't like plates being exposed because I have I'm a weirdo who has like all sorts of different plates, like, because it's just been me and my daughter. So like, I don't have like a set of like six or eight perfect plates. Right. I have like two green, one gray, one, like, <laughs> yeah, that's our um, house. But that works for me. Right. Because again, like, it's like, for me, I take pictures of my food and my dinner and that's content. Right. So mm -hmm. I have to kind of have that variation. Mm -hmm. um, but what I have are all of my cookbooks. Right. So I love that. I love because it also makes me feel like, okay, I'm ready to cook. Right. Like, and, and there's inspiration everywhere. So like, there's no, I feel like also mentally it prepares me because I, I think like, okay, well I can come up with something regardless of what ingredients I have, because you know, sometimes, and I know every single person feels this, even chefs, you open the fridge and, and you're like, I don't even know what to make. Right. You're like, um, that's yeah, me just every day, Claudia, we need to talk about that later. Yeah. But, but my point is when you walk into a kitchen and you have these cookbooks, you're like, well, I can figure something out between all of these books and all of this inspiration. There's, I've got to figure something out. So it makes me more inclined to cook at home instead of like going out to cook or ordering in, which is easy to do when it's just one person. Right. Uh, it's the perfect excuse to be like, well, I'm not going to like make the like dirty the whole kitchen. And then of course, then I do, which is why my house is a mess right now. Um, <laughs> I've been cooking a lot. I'm uh, a lot of the problem with why it looks a complete disaster behind me is because I'm in the process of writing a cookbook. So there's just like stuff everywhere. And, um, but to answer the question fully, I think, um, functionality is super key. Um, so for me, um, dishes and plates and things like that are away from the cooking area completely. Um, growing up, my mom would always have like the plates right next to the, the stove. And I don't, I don't get that. Um, because functionality for me is most important, right? I don't want to, and this, this happens in, in, in the kitchen when you're on MasterChef, right? One of my biggest tips is like, get all of your ingredients as soon as possible so that you don't have to be making trips back and forth. The less amount of back and forth that you do, the less of likelihood of you burning your steak or burning your water. Right. And so having all of those things kind of closer to your cooking area makes it easier where you just grab, 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 right? Uh, whether it's in drawers and things like that. So yeah, I have all of my pots and pans near me um, on all the bottom drawers on the left and right side. And then I have all of my spices on my left-hand side and on my right-hand side, I have some of my my dry goods and things like that, um, legumes. And then behind me, I have a full pantry that's an open pantry where I have actual racks where I have all of my equipment, because of course I have a million things of equipment. So, you know, everything from like induction burners, if I need extra burners, right? Because yes, I have like five burners, but sometimes that's not enough for a chef. So I'll have like, I have two induction burners. I have like my mixer and things like that, that don't fit on the counter. And also like, why do they need to be there if I'm not using them 90% of the time, right? And so, um, so yeah, so I've moved that into kind of the pantry space so that whenever I need them, I can grab them and bring them out. And then once I'm done with them, wrap them up and put them away so that they're not on my counter. And that of course leaves me feeling like, oh, look at my nice kitchen, you know, like it's picture perfect 90% of the time. <laughs> I, I love that. I, I, you know, I'm, cause I have, I took a huge, bold design risk and the the, the wall that has the range, I just took away all my upper cabinets because it was just housing old mugs and old yeah. plates we never use. So the shelves we have, I'm just like you, we only have five plates. Like we, we really don't have that much dishware yeah. because then I just wash it off and it never collects us. But anyways, I'm really thinking about your idea of putting more cooking stuff on there and then putting the plates in a drawer, which is great for the kids to reach. Um, you might just have, you just, you just gave me a really great idea. 
Yeah, because it makes it a lot more functional, right? Yes. And then I'm tall, right? I'm six feet tall. So I wish I was six nobody, feet, but okay, go yeah. on. But but for example, my cleaning lady, she can't put the dishes up that high. <laughs> She's like five two, you know what yeah, I mean? But you like and so so every time she comes, like if there's something that needs to go up, she'll like leave it on the counter and then I know that that has to go up, right? Yeah. And so it's those kinds of things. It's just in terms of functionality. I think like if you can make your space more functional, then you're going to be just so much better. Okay. So going from functionality to mindset, I'm going to tell you my biggest pain point when it comes to meal prepping and I still have to cook every day. Um, I, I I love cooking for fun. I don't like cooking for real (laughs) (laughs) because then it's like uh, a chore. So how, what is your advice for someone like me who just has a limiting, I just have a negative mindset about prepping, like Chinese food, Asian food. There's a lot of prep. There's a lot of cutting vegetables. Like there's just Japanese food. Forget about it. There's so much prep. I mean, that's why it's so yummy, but like, I am so, I don't know what it is. I can't for the life of me get past my thinking about the work yeah. Um, how do you, how do you help somebody like me so that I'll enjoy the everyday cooking? Yeah. Cause it's not that hard. It's not like I'm going to go cook a gourmet meal, Claudia. Like it could be just stir fry. Yeah. But I opt for the frozen bag of vegetables sometimes just cause I have this and I want, I want to feed my kids more fresh stuff. Right. So yeah. yeah. what's your advice? Well, a couple of things. I think knowing knowing that sometimes you do need the frozen veggies is also fair. And you also need to forgive yourself for that. Because if I sat here and said, I make everything from scratch, I would be lying to you. Right. Like I'm not going to make, um, I don't know. Let me think of something. Go to Jang by myself. Like, no, thank you. Right. Um, I am not going to, um, what is another one that really just kills me? Um, I don't know. I don't have one right off the top of my head, but you know, I think like, there are things that you should definitely consider, right? In terms of prep, I always use prep time as I think of it as self-care time. Okay. Let me explain. Okay, please. Um, I, whenever I'm getting ready to prep a meal or I have to prep ingredients, or I just came home from the grocery store and I need to prep some ingredients so that I can have them available for the rest of the week, right? Like Sunday prep or something. Um, what I do is I'll turn on like my favorite podcasts Um, and it's my opportunity to zone out. Like my rule with my daughter would be like, don't talk to me while I'm prepping. Don't talk to me while my podcast is on. Like regardless. And, and, and sometimes like I would just put on the speaker because then everyone can hear mom's working right now. So like leave her alone. Right. Um, and so then it's like, it's on, it's on in the kitchen. I'm listening to it. And like, I don't know about you, but I'm like the kind of podcast listener, especially with like some of my crime ones. I'm like, no, (laughs) same you know what I mean or I'll call somebody like my mom who I know I'm gonna have like a one hour long conversation and I just get through it right or like if I really don't want to do the dishes for me it's the dishes I oh my god I cannot do the dishes like it is I did so many dishes growing up because I was the eldest of four so every time I would get like scolded it was like go do the dishes and I would be like no So for me, dishes are like my painstaking kind of chore thing that I don't like to do. So whenever I have to do the dishes, I'll call my mom, I'll turn on a podcast. And it's like, I, I, I reformatted in my brain as like, this is my self-care time. This is my quiet time. I'm going to quiet my mind and I'm going to focus on the task because I think so often we are like constantly filling our minds with like all this stuff. Right. And like, your mind will not stop. But if you are focused on like a menial task, like chopping, Chopping. right? Cleaning, I don't know, uh, cleaning uh, peas, which I hate. So I get it. Uh, Cleaning like snow peas, right? Or or like trimming, trimming like Herico Vare or something. Like, I'm just like, oh my God, dude. Like, I'll just turn on a podcast. And it's like, I, I, it, for some reason, my mind stops with like the tomorrow I have to go to the gym and I have to do this. And then after that, I have to go in this area. And my mind stops that. Okay. And I like, love that. And I, those breaks are necessary. I love that because, um, pairing it with something that you love. And then also, uh, I love that so much that thank you for helping me because yeah. I, you know what I think when I'm meal prepping, Oh my God, I've, but I have five other things that I really should be doing. And that's the wrong mindset because exactly you're going to always hate it then. 
So that we totally makes sense. Hate it. That totally makes sense. Well, Claudia, it's time to wind down. And I just loved our time. I feel like we could have talked another five hours. Same. And I hope <laughs> I hope you can come back because yes, there's just so much it. more to talk to you about. But really, truly, what I love about you is your authenticity, your willingness to be real. Yeah. Um, that's hmm. a gift. It really is a gift. Not everybody is willing to do that. Yeah. And um, thank you for bringing your light to all of, of us. Course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful. And I, I can't wait to watch all of these podcasts and listen to you while I'm cooking. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wouldn't that be fun? And then maybe yeah. I'll, just, I'll, I'll have little secret messages like Claudia, send me some tamales right now. <laughs> FedEx. Yes. yes. <laughs> I have to ship you some some food for sure. Oh my gosh, yeah.